everyone. We are here for the virtual summer camp. This is the clay edition, so we'll be making these clay loop wind chimes. See if you can hear them. So what you'll do is you'll pick up your free bag of supplies from the Anton Art Center, and um, you're gonna get six clay loops in them that have already been fired. Excuse me, okay. And then you're also gonna get some acrylic paints. They're not gonna look like this though. They're gonna be in nice little containers for you. Um, and some fishing line to hang your um, wind chimes up with, okay? So when you get your kit, you can decide if you want to paint the clay loops or just leave them uh, natural. You can do that as well. And if you leave them natural, they'll just be this cream color. So you want to decide what color you want to paint them, if you do want to paint them. And then you also want to decide which um, loop is going to be the top of the wind chime. So you can see I chose one that's a little more curved. You can choose any of the loops that you want. <clears throat> you just want to make sure that um, you situate it so that it's um, this way and not hanging down this way, right? I guess you could hang it this way and have them all coming off of here too. Whatever you want to do is fine. Just get as creative as you possibly can with it. So what I'm going to show you in the video is just how to paint the loops. I'm just going to paint one of them just to show you and then I think you'll get the idea. And then I will assemble the six loops um, to make our wind chime. Um, the assembly part, you may need a little bit of help from your parents or a big sister or brother because it does take a little bit of patience to figure out how you want to hang them so that they do clink together when the wind blows and also to just help tie the um, fishing line, which can be hard to tie, to each part of the clay loops. Okay, all right, so what I did for this one up here is I just took an orange paint and then um, in some white paint and I added a little bit of the orange to the white and then as I painted each loop I just kept adding more orange. So you get a monochromatic um, wind chime here and I chose to have the darkest color on top. So let's see, I chose yellow for this one and then I did just grab some white paint so that you can see how I added um, the colors together just to make it nice and simple. You could do, oh, good, oh gosh. Um, let's see here. So we just want to um, kind of see what color we get here. So like, I just wanted to uh, get this, this yellow color a little more muted. And we do that by adding a little bit of white. If you have some paints at home, that's good too. Maybe if you don't like some of the colors that we've included in your kit. Let's see, this is, let's see what this is. I think this is the white. <clears throat> yeah, this one's a little low, so I'm gonna use this guy. All right, so um, a couple of things that you're gonna need from your house, or maybe if you can pop into uh, Michael's Arts and Crafts or somewhere, is a small to medium sized paintbrush, some scissors. Uh, what else do I have on my list here? Paintbrush, scissors, oh, and then I'll show you here. I'm using a wooden spoon. Um, you can use a dowel or anything at home to just be able to put my clay loop on it so that once I'm done painting all of this part, I can um, hang it to dry and maybe even paint the end that I'm holding on to. I'll show you what I mean here in a sec. And then I just have a couple boxes to rest it on. Okay, so um, really get into mixing your paint colors here. It's kind of fun. So I just made a pale yellow by adding a little bit of yellow to the white. Okay, and then once you have the color that you like, you can just paint right on your clay loop. This is a pretty light color yellow. And what I did with the orange one behind me is I did start with a really pale orange and then I kept adding more and more of the orange. Okay, so this really does not take a long time to dry. 
Uh, you just want to make sure that it's dry before you assemble. So maybe you paint, wait a couple hours, and then you can assemble it. The other thing that you can do is you can choose to um, spray the whole thing with a clear, a clear spray, like a clear gloss. I can't think of what it's called now. It's not like a fixative. It's just like a, yeah, like a Krylon things. What else is that called? It's called something else besides, no, like a shellac. Like a shellac. You can do that too. And then I didn't have any here, so you can see like this is a little bit more muted, but I kind of like that look. So, Okay, so this is where I use the dowel to help me out here. I guess I should have chosen a darker color. Okay, so this is what I did for most of the loops. I, and you wanna, especially if you're mixing colors or doing the, the monochromatic theme, you want to um, paint the whole loop because then you're gonna be changing colors and then you don't even have to wash your paintbrush, which is nice. I'm all about doing less dishes, as I call them. So I'm just painting the bottom here. There's just a couple spots. Okay. Going up. They don't know the rules. <laughs> okay. All right. So I've got that bottom part. Just really take your time with this. All right. And then we're going to let it um, dry like this. If you really want to lay them out and dry them on some newspaper, that's fine too. But I like when, you know, there's no like bare spots on it. Okay. So. I'm not gonna paint any of these loops because I wanna be able to assemble them to show you and they take a little bit of time. All right, so you're gonna get your six loops in your kit. So some of them are gonna be a little crazy like this. Some of them are gonna be smaller like that. Some will be longer. They're all gonna have a different um, thing going on. They're all handmade. So just be careful of any sharp spots on any of these pieces. Okay, and then you're just gonna start to arrange. So for this one up here, I just, I knew I wanted this top one as the top part. I just thought, oh, this will be perfect for it. Um, <clears throat> for this one, and I just grabbed some random ones out of the box of loops that we made. And I'm, I'm trying to think, like this might be fun because it is the only one that's like this. And the rest are these, nice loops. I think that I'm going to use this one for the top. Do I have a time limit for this thing? No. Okay. All right. <clears throat> so just be patient with this. And I think I'm going to use it this way. And the reason I'm choosing this way is because I feel like if it's down here, I don't know, it'd be like hard to decide where I'm going to put the part that's going to hold it up like this to hang somewhere. I don't know if any of these things really matter. This is just where my mind is going with it. Okay, so that's gonna be my top part. <clears throat> so I just know that this is how I want it to be. And then from there, I'm just gonna start tying some fishing line onto my loops. So I think we're giving you about four feet of fishing line in the bag, so that should be more than enough. I measured out, I think I used like five, or not five, I used like three for this. So we did an extra, so it'd be easier for you to tie. So as you can see here, I really am using a lot of extra um, fishing line, just to make it easier. And, and you can ask your parents or siblings or aunt or uncle or whoever to help you tie these. So what I found the easiest thing to do is tie the loops first, and I um, I tie them three times each, and then give yourself enough. So go through all of them and tie your loops. As I mentioned, you want to just make sure they're dry. The way that you situate the loops, like see how some of these the um, there's a there's a more tapered spot or a smaller end. 
I just like the way they hang like this. They're more like um, raindrops. But you could hang them like this if you wanted. Then they're more like slugs. All right, so I'm just gonna go through and tie them. Like I said, three times. Oh my goodness, I almost just cut right where I just tied it down there. Just cause. Okay, second one. And as I'm doing this, I like to kind of just visualize where I want these. I kind of like the idea of the longer loops being um, either towards the bottom or on the sides and the shorter ones being up, up higher. But you can do whatever you want just as long as the um, loops are gonna hit each other and clank around a little bit. And this is probably the most time consuming part. This one. Two more. So exciting. This is a pretty large one. Yeah, I did some loops, loop ones in your um, supply kits. <clears throat> I did some like pretty small ones just to kind of give everyone a variety. Last one. I'm just look at my notes here. Oh, I guess I should talk quickly while I'm doing this about how to get these free tool kits. Tool kits? Supply kits. There's no tools in them. These free supply kits for the virtual summer camps. So we have all kinds of fun crafts to do. And you can go on the Anton Art Center website and register. Um, I think it's in classes and you can register for, um, to pick up a kit and you just pick it up from the Art Center. Okay. I think I'm gonna do this one. Like I said, I'm just like playing around rearranging. Try not to rush this part. And I think what I'm gonna start with is I'm actually gonna start with the longest one. Okay, so I'm situating my wind chime this way. And let's just try to tie it there. So, same thing, three knots. Whoops. Okay. All right, so we know that that one's gonna be there, so then we want the rest of them to hang so that they're actually gonna clink together. And um, this is how I assembled this one here. I just held it up and made sure that they were gonna clink together and then put my thumb where that is on the top part here. And then just tied this around. So this is where the fishing line gets a little complicated. It's hard to see sometimes. Actually, it might be even better to have someone help you do this. Are clinking sometimes. Okay. All right, let's get some of these shorter ones on. Same thing. So we're just gonna hold up our wind chime. Oh, that looks good. There? Yeah. Okay. Uh oh. 
that was dramatic. It really, there really wasn't anything wrong. I just. <laughs> All right. You should have seen me doing a, a practice one of these in my studio. I was like using my face to hold the the uh, fishing line in place and <laughs> doing all kinds of stuff. The second time you do something is usually a little easier. Okay. That's going good. All right, let's see what we have going here. Should we do one way out there? I think so. Oh, the other thing I tried doing, on this one at least, because it is a, a perfect little loopy, I did um, three on one side and three on the other, as far as the hanging down loops go. Seem to um, make the top part sit better. This one, since it's such a funny, like twisty loop, I don't think it's really gonna matter that much, but maybe, okay. All right, one more, I think. Well, I know there's only one more, and you only get six. That looks good. Wait, one, two, meh, that'll be fine. For sake of you guys just watching me tie fishing line onto clay parts, I'll just speed this up. Otherwise, I would like, take off the one side and make sure it looks level and right and it's balanced and which you should most definitely do at home. Unless someone's filming you. Then you just gotta do what you can. Okay, they're all clinking. Just imagine them in color. And then the last part here. Well actually there's two last parts. One of the last parts is to make the top part. Fishing line. By the way, the fishing line that you're getting, well, this is not the exact, but this is a, like a 10 pound weight. I hold 10 pounds of, what does that mean? 10 pounds of tension, like fish, like a fish? Yeah, like a 10 pound fish. Does that include like the tension that the fish puts on the? I'm just trying to get you guys to talk. I'm... <laughs> All right, so um, on this one, I made it, so let me just take this out. Oh, God. Okay, so I made it so that, so I tied these two points right here, and this is one piece of fishing line, and then I just tied a knot here, so you had like a little loop on the, on the top part. So that's what we're gonna do on this next one here. So just give yourself enough. And when I, when I say enough, I mean like enough to like easily tie the sides. So you have enough to like make the knots. This is a very good exercise in patience. And knot tying, which everyone should know how to do or learn how to do it and then practice. Then you'll get really good at tying fishing line. Then you can move on to practicing balloon tying. I mean, tying off those balloons is hard. You, you know, you gotta practice that. You do water balloon tying. <laughs> this has gone too far. <laughs> practice tying your knots and I think this is a good little exercise. Yeah, Roscoe. I wish I was here for him to be here. That's my childhood. He was at every ice cream social. Blew the whistle, everyone in the pool. Okay, so there's the little triangle guy. And then I'm just gonna grab down like an inch and a half and just tie that in a knot. This will make it easy to hang up outside or in your bedroom or wherever you want. Okay, so there's our little top part. And then we have all these crazy strings hanging, or uh, fishing line bits hanging off. So grab your scissors, have your, someone help you and just start cutting off the little tails. 
It'll just make it look more finished. Don't cut too close to the knot. Don't cut the knot itself. and Don't cut the strings that you have the loops on. Just take your time doing this. Oh, there's one. Okay. Uh-oh. Okay. All right, I think those are all on the top. Yep, so I got all the ones on the top. This is starting to look different, but that's okay. And then you're gonna cut all the loops at the, or the, all the extra fishing line tails at the bottom. So there's some other ways that you can finish your pieces. Um, we were talking about just adding, adding things to them. You still wanna make sure that they clink and stuff. We could always add a little bit of glitter if you want. That's pretty much it. Glitter and paint. Can't really think of anything else. Thought I had some more ideas for you, but I'm gonna leave it to you guys to get creative at home with it. All right, so um, here's the finished product. And the other thing that you can do is it's, um, since it is a little bit more difficult to get these tighter up top, if you need to move these around a little bit, you can do that. Just kind of shimmy them. Okay, shimmy your little loops other places. And then other than that, you're all done. So there is your ceramic loop um, wind chimes. Have fun with this and please register and sign up to pick up your free supplies. And just go to the Anton Art Center webpage under classes and register and you can come pick up all of your supplies. And we have a whole bunch of other um, awesome demonstrations and projects for you to do for the virtual summer camp. Okay, this is Deanna Klein signing off. Thanks, bye.